Hello, Lexi Carducci here and another one of my Property Sundays. I am a property finder, I'm a relocation agent, I'm a developer, I'm an investment landlord. So everything I do has something to do with property. So every Sunday I've been chatting to you um, a little bit about something different to do with property every week. So this week it is all about Art Deco, the most celebrated era of 20th century art and design. The style first appeared in France just before the First World War. The 20s and 30s were its heyday. It represented luxury and glamour. Think the great Gatsby and Agatha Christie. It could be exotic, inspired by Egyptian-like motifs, shapes and patterns. It was also bold and modern in style with streamlined clean lines and geometric patterns. The Art Deco style encompassed everything from industrial buildings to door handles, from cruise ships to chairs, and from residential homes to radios. So let's look at some of those key kind of Art Deco features that really characterise that Art Deco style. Well, looking at the building behind me, it's, uh, it's a very good example. So they were often white, they had flat roofs, they had curved metal windows. This one uh, doesn't have metal windows anymore. Everything needed to be replaced, but that was a stereotypical thing of Art Deco houses. And they were often bold geometric prints. They were really something that was so, you know, so modern, so different from those kind of pre-First World War houses. They were something more exciting. They were something a little bit luxurious, a bit glamorous. There's a really great quote from the Daily Mail Ideal Home Exhibition from 1934, where an observer said, this year it's all white, flat roofed, and different. And that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? So let's take a look at some famous, recognizable Art Deco buildings. Some notable examples include the Chrysler Building and the Empire State in New York, the Hoover Building in London and Battersea Power Station, as well as many famous Odeon style cinemas. And even the house in Gideon Park, Essex, which featured on the front of the Kellogg's Corn Flakes packets around 1935 as the Sunshine House, an emblem of modern living. And let's not forget the entire Miami beachfront. And if it's good enough for Miami, then it's good enough for us. So I grew up in this Art Deco building behind me. It was built in 1939 in the heart of Torbay, the English Riviera. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it was built by a chap called Mr. Buswell. He designed and built it himself. Now the story was, that uh, a lot of these plots of lands were being sold off by a big estate nearby uh, and people had the opportunity to buy the bit of land and then kind of buy the design of a house that would go on that bit of land. So there was an architect called Edwin Lutchens. Now he designed a lot of the properties that are around this specific area in Torbay, but it was actually his team, uh, which were made up of kind of younger people. They had a bit of a more modern flair uh, to their designs. And they are the ones that designed all of these art deco buildings. And in this specific area, you know, there's six or seven of them all dotted around. And you can tell uh, from the original kind of prints that they are very similar. You see very similar styles some people now have put roofs on them uh, some have been left as they were but the plot behind me actually the gentleman mr. Buswell he designed it and built it himself and he went a little bit further and he's gone the extra step and added some extra features such as this stepped architraving here and the cornices at the top of the building as well as some extra Art Deco features on the inside. So let's go take a look, come on. So these are some of the details on the inside, like this Art Deco clock in the hallway. And behind me here, you can see the detailing on the door frames and even the ceiling. So this is a door handle made out of a very popular Art Deco product called Bakelite. It was often in dark brown colours, it has a glossy finish and most importantly it was very easy to mould. So you often find it in household accessories like the door handles or radios. So again we've got a very traditional Art Deco fireplace. You can see that stepped design here. 
and fireplaces at the time of the Art Deco era became much more of a feature now that the gas and electric units were being used. This is a replica Claris Cliff teapot. Now, Clarice Cliff was a prominent British designer of the era, and she was most known for pottery design. And just like this, her designs were very bright, they were very bold, and she was most noted for her 1928 range called Bazaar. Another fireplace, now you can see from the wall behind me that this didn't have a chimney. So again, much more of a feature of the era. And look at this gorgeous clock. Now that is Art Deco, if I've ever seen it before. Uh, look at the geometric patterns. This is actually part of a garniture, so normally it would have two kind of other accessory end pieces that would surround it on the fireplace. Uh, and not only that, look, you've got these, this gorgeous Art Deco figurine here. Even the candle holder is Art Deco. Not to mention the hatch that's behind me again. Look at this traditional stepped hatch. So this is a very typical staircase of the era. There are no spindles. You've got this gorgeous teak railing and it's very, very wide. So follow me to the top of the stairs. And on the landing, we'll see another very typical feature. It's the sunburst or sunray window. This is another replica ornament. She is called the Etoile de Mer, which means starfish. Her designer was Chipperus, and he was a very high quality bronze artist of the era. Now she's a replica, but an original of this statue sold at auction for 70,000 pounds in 2010. Incredible. The Art Deco era saw the bathroom as one of the most important rooms in the house. They were designed based on five-star hotels and Hollywood glamour. Everything was created to fit the extravagant look. Even the taps were over the top with their dramatic shapes and mirrors were embellished with geometric patterns, giving that designer edge. Coloured suites like this, mint green and yellow one, were all the rage in the 1930s. It created a really bold look. Chrome light fittings and other shiny, high-polished accessories such as door handles and switches were common features in the bathroom. Despite the lavish pops of colour being fashionable, the monochrome look of the era was a modern and classic option too, often seen in checkerboard, tiled floors and black and white toilets like this original. just picked up this gorgeous lady lab. She weighs a ton, but she is beautiful. Uh, so these first became very, very popular after the Paris Exposition in 1925, and they depict balance, proportion, and style. And of course they make the perfect centerpiece, don't they? Art Deco chairs were low and boxy, like this original that actually came when we purchased the house. We've recently upcycled it and painted it in a baby pink. So we've had clocks, we've had fireplaces, we've had chairs, we've had lamps, and we've even got Art Deco cutlery. Look at that, aren't they gorgeous? Look at the detail on this and the shape of these as I turn it around. Every last detail is Art Deco. And if the knives and forks weren't enough, this lovely boat-shaped ornament is actually a salt, pepper and mustard holder in that gorgeous chrome that is very, very popular with the era. It's look beautiful. So let's look at the entrance gates to these beautiful Art Deco buildings. They were often a darker colour, so browns or blacks to contrast with those white Art Deco style buildings. And again, like we saw the um, on the landing, we had the sunburst and the sun ray pattern in the glass. This is another celebration of the sun. And of course it stood for positivity, light and new beginnings. Great, so comment below, let me know what your favourite Art Deco style is and I will see you same time, same place next Sunday for another Property Sunday.